Bob and Doris Hart had lived in the same house in the suburbs of Indianapolis, Indiana, for 12 years. Each day usually began with the same comfortable routine. But on the morning of March 28, 1991, their lives took an unexpected and shocking turn. Approximately 7, 10 in the morning, Mrs. Hart was upstairs in the shower. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Hi, what's happening? Good morning, sir. Is David home? No. Mr. Hart advised Dave doesn't live here anymore. He had a cap on it said police. Um, think I could use the phone? Sure, come on in. No All problem. Right. Be quiet. Hey, be quiet. Hey, there's nobody here but me. Nobody here. Nobody here but me and my wife. Hey, don't hurt anybody. I, I... Don't hurt anybody. 911, what emergency are you reporting? You know, Meridian, someone's downstairs with my husband, and it's, I heard him hollering, don't hurt me and Doris. Please get somebody. Okay, ma'am, stay on the line with me. Do you have any idea who it is? Please hurry. Up. Okay, we will. We'll be in route. Stay on the line with me. Well, well okay, we'll get, we'll, we'll, we'll get it some money. Back it up. We'll get it some Shut up. money. Back no up. You don't have any idea who it is? No. Okay, do you know Stop. if there's... Who is... No. was transferred to Marion County Sheriff's Dispatcher Michael Day. I've had residence robberies where the people have already been gone, but never while it's actually still going on in the residence. Dispatch, one point. One point. Want me to go ahead and divert or start or keep on going to the Colts complex? Divert. Okay. When Deputy Ted Cassidy heard about the intruder, he was just seven blocks from the scene. As I got to about 82nd Street on Meridian. Dispatch hit me back again and said uh, that they just received a panic alarm from that same residence. At that time, I shut down all my siren and my red lights, and I started looking for numbers on the mailbox. Dispatch, I've got a black Monte Carlo pulling up at a higher rate of speed northbound on Meridian Street. I want to stop it. When the car came right across in front of me, the thought ran through my mind, I'm at the right place at the right time. Yeah, I think he's going to run from me. He is. 10-4. Four. We're eastbound on 82nd Street. We disregarded all stop signs. He had no intentions of stopping for anything. We're still eastbound. 10-4. I was trying to find out the direction they were going so I could have other cars I and mean, try to get a route for them to go. I'd be a fool if I didn't say I wasn't scared. You can be killed in a car crash just as easy as you can be shot. I was scared, scared to death. probably 65 mile an hour. Southbound on Wickham. 136, 180. The gentlemen in the car were lost. They had no idea where they were going. I really believe that if he had have known where he was going, we would have probably been going faster than we were. I've never seen anybody jump from a moving car like that except on TV. 
and they can do anything with TV. Can you copy the plate? Go ahead. 49, H. Henry, 2694. 10-4. This is a school day. We have children standing out on the streets waiting for the bus. That was my biggest fear through the whole chase was that one of these kids was going to step out into the roadway and get hit by him. On college, northbound. I saw one of our cars coming southbound on college. While the first suspect was being positively identified, the search for the second suspect intensified. We had a white male, blue jean jacket, camouflage pants, bail out on us. He may be 1032, use extreme caution. The Indianapolis police were also alerted to be on the lookout for the suspect. <laughs> Sheriff's Department K-9 units combed the neighborhood where the suspect had last been seen. A radio traffic reporter heard about the search on his scanner and broadcast a description of the man. What we're looking for is a white male about 5'11 with brown hair, a blue jean jacket and camouflage pants who bailed out of a car that was being pur pursued by the police following uh, an attempted residence robbery. If you see, any see anyone suspicious, do call the Marion County Sheriff's Department. There's a canine unit in the area looking, and of course we're overhead as well. So we'll keep you advised about this, but this one subject is still at large. Back in a couple, Big John Gillis, WIBC Air Traffic Control. When we continue. Yeah, we had a report about a uh, white male that looked pretty suspicious. Where's he at? I mean, that's an emergency. I've got to know where he's going. Following a high speed chase, Marion County Sheriff's deputies successfully captured a suspect wanted in a house robbery. But during the chase, a second suspect, possibly armed, had leaped from the moving car and disappeared into the surrounding neighborhood. I was just kind of standing there observing because I was rather anxious to find out if this was the one that jumped from the car from us. Dispatcher O'Day immediately called the Yellow Cab Company. Yellow Cab. <laughs> this is Marion County. I need to find out where your cab 518 is going. 518? Yeah, he just picked up a subject at 8400 Westfield Boulevard, and that subject matches the description of someone we're looking for that was involved in a residential robbery that occurred about two hours ago. Matter of fact, he matched the description to a T. Uh, you don't want him to... No, I want that other guy to hear it. See if you can just ask for his de destination, because you have another run for him or something. 
I in turn called the cabbie. Units from around the city converged on the area, including Officer Ron Breezy. I noticed a cab coming towards me. It was headed southbound on Washington Boulevard. I thought it was probably the cab. Oh, we've got somebody here stopping down. Somebody stopping you? Yeah. Both of you, put your hands up where I can see them! In the back of my mind, I was thinking it could be either one of them. I didn't put it past the suspect to have switched seats with the driver. I looked at the driver. He didn't fit the basic description as well as the passenger did. I think it all happened so fast he didn't know what happened, and that's exactly what I wanted to happen. Bernard Lewis was driving cab 518 that day. So I heard him kind of whimper in the back on a low voice. And it was hard on him to get out, pointing them guns. I heard him say something like, who, me? You know, it's kind of like, why me? What did I do? Adam 128 Control, we have apprehension of the subject in yellow cab. Got him. Oh, got him. <laughs> anytime you get a pursuit and you're a dispatcher, it, your adrenaline just flows. And anytime you can make apprehension on, that's just more or less icing on the cake. I just did residence robbery up north. It was interesting the way the cab driver kept his calm through the thing, too. For, for being a, what you would call a rookie, I guess, he acted very well. That's it. No big deal. Just another day in the big city. <laughs> Two suspects pleaded guilty to robbery and three other charges and were sentenced to 15 years. If all the crime that's committed in Marion County would end up like that, with apprehensions and convictions and no one hurt, we as police officers would feel like our job was complete. Three months after the incident, Bob and Doris Hart have gone on with their lives, but they've made a few changes. We put in an intercom system, and unless we know you, you do not get the door open. Do we ask you who you are and what your business is? But it does give you second thoughts of probably about everything that you do. I don't know, I just have all the praise in the world for 911 now because, you know, they, I feel like they have enriched our lives because if they hadn't have been here, well, I was scared that I was going to be killed. That's what I was afraid of. This is a proven fact with this case. 911 works. You know, use it. We will be more than glad to help you.